In this video, we're reviewing the Einscan SE and the Einscan SP 3D scanners from Shiny 3D. It's been a while since I've reviewed a 3D scanner here on Maker's Muse, so how far have they come and is it worth buying one? Watch to find out. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse. So Shiny 3D has a special place in Maker's Muse history being the first company ever to send me a product to review back in 2015, and that was the IronScan S, a high resolution scanning system using structured light technology. The scanner produced incredible quality 3D scans, however it was a real pain to set up, requiring calibration every time it was used, and it had a whole nest of cables, making it super easy to accidentally bump it during scanning and bump it out of alignment. Well, things have changed a bit since then with Shining 3D's introduction of the Ironscan SE Elite and the SP Platinum 3D scanners. Both models look visually similar, however they have differences in build quality, speed and accuracy. Let's start with the SE. Priced at $1,199 USD, the Ironscan SE is the lower price of the two, aimed at entry level 3D scanner markets. It boasts an eight second scan time, 0.1 millimeter accuracy, and a minimum distance between points of 0.17 millimeters. If you wanna use it in free scan or tripod mode without the turntable, you can scan up to 700 by 700 by 700 millimeters at a time using manual alignments to stitch your scans together. The IronScan SP, on the other hand, knocks things up a notch with a faster five second scan time and a 0.05 millimeter accuracy with the same point distance of 0.17 millimeters. It also has more scan options with the ability to use markers, which are these dots here on the turntable or as stickers onto objects so you can scan a larger area at once with a free scan mode area of 1200 by 1200 by 1200 millimeters at a time. The price, however, is increased as well to $2,299 USD, over $1,000 more than the SE model. Both units have almost identical form factors with the new plastic stand holding everything in place, including the turntable and scanner. This massively increases the reliability of the system as it locks the components together. So realigning and calibration is something you only rarely have to do, pretty much when you set it up and it's still accomplished with the same manner, using a board with dots and markers, which you rotate around 90 degrees each time till the machine has calibrated. But the build quality of both systems is very different, even though they look identical. The SE feels slightly lower cost with its plastic components, whereas the SP uses over-molded rubber in areas, heavier construction, even the marker board is aluminium versus foam board. I'll be completely honest, I'm not sure what justification there was for tooling and marketing of two different yet identical looking systems at such a close price point, relatively speaking on the 3D scanning market, but there we go. If you see my review of the Einscan S, you'll notice one insane improvement in these models. Two cables. The Einscan S had five, which led to a rat's nest of heavy wires that further exacerbated these alignment issues. And one bump on any of those wires or just moving your laptop slightly would throw everything off. It was hugely frustrating. Here, you only have two wires and setup is a breeze and takes hardly any time at all. And once it's set up, it's pretty much done. There's very little you can do to misalign the system because of this plastic part. Something that's quite cool is even the image signal of the projector in the system is handled through that single USB cable. I thought that was pretty neat. The power on button is a bit weird being a capacitive touch, but that's like a super minor complaint and a kid could pretty much set this up. But what about the software? Well, that's a different story. Both systems use the same software, which is provided by Shiny 3D. And to be fair, it has come a huge way since I last tested it with the Ironscan S and it can run the SE and SP as well. It requires you to register the software and the hardware at first time use. And it does have a few questionable aspects like the install of TeamViewer, for what I would assume remote assistance, not really something I want on my computer. The user interface isn't as hugely polished as some other software, but it is straightforward to use, even going so far as to highlight what button you should hit next in the scanning sequence. What most people don't realize when it comes to 3D scanning is the scanning part isn't the difficult part, it's the post-processing. Scanners pick up noise or capture geometry you don't want to feature in the final mesh, and all of this needs to be manually removed. 
The software gives you good control over brightness settings, which is important because you need different settings to scan a bright light object versus a darker object. And not all objects can be scanned. The technology used in these systems is known as structured light, and it works by projecting an array of lines onto the surface of an object, and a camera reads back distortions caused to those lines, and it uses these distortions to read the form of the object and create a point cloud. But not all objects, as I said, can be scanned. You can't scan metallic or reflective things. You can't scan clear objects. You can't scan objects that are too dark. And also you can't scan objects that are furry because that interferes with the projection. Each capture by the scanner is then aligned either automatically using the turntable to help with the indexing, or you can also manually align the scans using three different points chosen of two different scans based on areas that are very close to each other, hopefully as close as you can get them, and then the system will use those three points to then align your scan. If you're using the turntable, it's super easy and the software is actually pretty, pretty powerful at automatically aligning based on geometry. But as I said, if it doesn't do that, you'll need to use the three points for manually aligning. It's things like this that make learning how to use 3D scanners a bit of a difficult task. And I'll be honest, both scanners do a great job at rejecting noise and the automatic alignment, as I said, worked pretty well except for all the most featureless of objects, which you had to manually align. And if you do want to scan objects that are clear or dark or shiny, you can use a light grey matte paint or even a purpose-made scan spray, which costs a fortune, but it does help. And when it comes to exporting your scans, you have the option now to export either as a raw mesh without any repairs or to make it watertight by closing holes. The scanner can't see around corners, so there'll often be small gaps in the scan and holes. And if you want to 3D print the objects you scan, you do need to repair them into a manifold watertight mesh. However, if the purpose of the scan is for visual or quality control purposes, you don't want to introduce artificial data and you're better off exporting the raw mesh with holes unrepaired. You also now have a nice pick of export formats with .3MF, being of particular noteworthiness. I do appreciate Shiny3D keeping up with the times and having this available as it's the best option in my opinion, especially if you want to preserve color data. Yes, both these scanners can capture texture as well as the object's shape, which is kind of handy if you're looking for that sort of thing. I had a blast 3D scanning various fruit with the Ironscan SC in texture scan mode using the turntable and even at medium export settings, the resulting mesh is stupidly huge. You need a seriously decent computer to run the software with a dedicated graphics card to have any chance, as well as the skill and patience to manipulate such a large file. Accuracy from both systems was super good, as you can see with this game controller housing that I 3D scanned. The small internal details aren't that great because again, it can't see around corners, but the outside of the, sh of the form is flawless basically. And I'll be completely honest, you have, to base, you have to simplify the meshes out of both these systems, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a higher quality system and kind of makes it difficult to justify the cost of the SP versus the SC if you're just decimating the file at the end. So conclusion time, who are these scanners for? Well, a better question might be, who has a use for a 3D scanner at all? 3D printing in itself can be difficult to justify due to the cost, but 3D scanning is even more so. You just, you really need a good use for it. And honestly, I haven't used a desktop 3D scanner for any projects since I reviewed the Ironscan S. However, that was mostly due to the time consuming setup of the Ironscan S and now it's a lot easier. I have a feeling that it's going to change. I do, however, think that there are industries that will find this tech extremely attractive at the price, such as automotive repair, antique dealers, medical and model gaming to name a few. Or if you had a driver side mirror housing and you wanted a passenger side one, scan it and flip it. How about showing a ceramic collectible in 3D on your website to prospective buyers? Scan it, put it on the website. And what if you have a rare Warhammer tank that you want to um, replicate? Hmm, interesting. So for those industries, yeah, even $2,000 might be paid off very quickly. Huge thanks to Shiny3D for providing not just one, but two 3D scanners for this review. And if you'd like to pick up one, you can find the purchase links down below. If you found this review helpful, then please do consider subscribing to Maker's Muse. I am passionate about empowering creativity through advanced manufacturing technologies such as these, and would love to have you on board. My name is Angus, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Of the 20th century. And man has sent
rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. 